In this video, we're going to do a full breakdown of my Upwork job success score. They have a new dashboard now that shows you what is contributing to your job success score and so that you can understand more about how you can improve it. Um, and so I'm going to go through each of these tabs here and provide some additional insights and commentary beyond what Upwork is providing here based on my understanding of spending many, many years on Upwork, working with many freelancers on helping them to figure out how to have a high job success score and what parts of the Upwork algorithm that maybe they don't advertise um, is also playing a part so that you can understand how you can get your job success score high enough to be able to have the visibility on your profile that you need to get invites to jobs and find more clients. So my job success score is 99% and it's been stuck at 99% the entire year. We're going to try to figure out why that is. Why is it not at 100%? Um, my success score used to be at 100% for a couple of years um, and then it dropped down to 99 And so one thing I'm trying to figure out is whether all the contracts that I closed that have no feedback is actually impacting my score because they say it doesn't, but I, I, I have my doubts. <laughs> um, uh, I had a bunch of contracts that I closed all within the period of a week that were old contracts that I never got around to closing. Um, just, yeah, don't make that mistake. Make sure you close contracts once the job is done because by that point the client doesn't remember you and I couldn't get any uh, rating and review from them. So let's go through each of these sections here. So first of all, how do I maintain a score? So it talks about how we calculate your score based on a daily 6, 12, and 24 month time frame. Your profile will display the highest score of these time frames. All right, so it gives you kind of an option there between the last six months or the last 24 months, 12 months. Now, um, mine's considered excellent. If you click on the little question mark here, the score reflects the consistent history of meeting or surpassing client expectations. It puts you on track for top rated or top rated plus. I'm already past that. I'm expert vetted but it's just saying that a 99% success score is enough to get that if you don't have it already. So how do I maintain the score? Keep more than two eligible jobs in the past 24 months to maintain a score. I meant that because I've had 110 clients in the last 24 months. So their, their minimum requirement is quite low, which is good. Um, yep, okay, that's the same thing there. Completed two eligible jobs in 24 months. Okay, and I completed 130. <laughs> um, so again, a job success score for any freelancer, even if they're extremely part-time on Upwork. So that requirement's very minimal. Um, only jobs with payments within the past 24 months will impact your score. Some jobs are considered ineligible and won't factor into your score. Okay, so as we come down here to some of my eligible jobs that are contributing to my score, I mean, this breakdown used to not exist, so this is super helpful. I, I, you need to go into your own account and, and find this. <laughs> if you go to upwork.com slash nx slash job success insights, it'll take you to this page. I'm not sure how I found it initially. So video strategy consulting long-term relationship. It's telling me what aspect of this job contributed to um, my job success score. So this first one is, it's saying that some of the contributing factors are higher earnings, contract length, and long-term relationship. So having all three of those is gonna help you the most. This one's just long-term relationship, See, contract length, what does it say about this? A single contract with a payment every 90 days is considered an extra job toward your job success score. Okay, so if it's the same contract, but you're getting a different payment every 90 days, up to a maximum of eight jobs. So contract length has to do with, you know, essentially the 
again, they, they keep changing their definitions of stuff. So that's why I have to go back and see what they mean by certain things because it keeps changing over time. So that's what they mean by contract length. Um, so it does have to do with the time scale there, but then you have long-term relationship. A relationship qualifies as long-term if a client's last payment is made more than 90 days after their first payment. Okay, so essentially you're at least working for them for 90 days. Now it's considered a long-term contract, okay? So you do want to seek out those long-term relationships, higher earnings, jobs with earnings between one and 250 are weighted as one job. Jobs with earnings between 251 and 1000 are weighted as 1.25 jobs. Jobs with earnings of more than a thousand are weighted as one and a half jobs. Okay. So essentially they're calculating your score based on the number of jobs, but they're using how much you're earning as a way to determine that you actually are getting more than just one job out of one job. Now this can either increase the positive impact when you meet client expectations or amplify a negative impact when you don't. So yeah, essentially if you get paid a lot and you get negative feedback from the client, that's going to hurt your score more than getting the same, the same. So let's say you get a two star review from a client that paid you $10,000 and you get a two star from you for review from a client who paid you a hundred dollars. The $10,000 two star review is actually going to hurt your score more than the two star review from the hundred dollar client. Um, which typically if a client is paying you that much money over a long period of time, you must be, per, you must be doing a good enough job or they wouldn't keep paying you. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I've never had that experience of having a high payment, but a negative, uh, review, but I can see why that would go against your score. Okay. So essentially something that you can do on, with yourself is to go through all your jobs that are eligible, that are contributing to your job success score and take a look at, uh, okay. Client satisfaction is also another factor because this, this gives you good data on how you can improve your score if it's too low, because for me, it's, you know, because it's high enough, all of these are just positive things. Um, there are three components that shape client satisfaction you must receive positive feedback on all three of these components. So the public feedback, okay, viewable as you know, a five-star rating on this job that I had. There's private feedback, and then there's contract ending reason. Because when you end a contract, or when a client ends a contract, you can choose the reason as being unsuccessful, freelancer, unresponsive. There's some negative reasons that the client can choose. Now, even though you don't see uh, these other two private feedback and contract ending reason, um, unless you're the one that ends the contract, um, you'll have a pretty good indication based on the public feedback. Cause if they gave negative private feedback, then chances are they also gave you a lower rating and review and a negative public feedback. Cause why would they, why would they say privately that you were didn't do a good job, but then publicly give you a really good score, right? Now you might have no feedback because they don't want to, I don't know, be mean <laughs> um, on your public profile, but they still give negative private feedback. Um, so my thought is that it's possible that even if you have, even though they say no feedback does not affect your score, I don't think it's as simplistic as that. I think if you have no public feedback, but they say something negative in the private feedback that could probably affect your score negatively. Um, so it's possible I had a client that said something privately that was just negative enough to hurt my score. But, uh, the public feedback was just no feedback or something. Um, when you receive three or more stars from a client, the job is considered successful. However, if private feedback or the contract ending is negative, either will override public feedback and the job will be considered unsuccessful. Okay. Yeah, this used to not be very clear. Upwork used to say nothing about this. So this is definitely recent. And jobs without feedback are excluded from your score. The Upwork needs to provide some more clarity on this because... I'm probably going to reach out to them and ask them if you end a contract 
and clients have 14 days to leave public feedback. Jobs without feedback are excluded from your score. Are they saying jobs without pub? So what if a client leaves public feedback or what if a client does not leave public feedback, but they do leave private feedback and the private feedback is negative? Is that excluded from your score because they left no public feedback? That, that's what this is saying. But then up here they say that the negative feedback privately overrides whatever the public feedback is. So anyways, I got to get some clarity from them on that. I'm probably going to ask them about that. Sorry, I can't give you a clear answer on that. My thinking is that if they do not leave public feedback at all, but they still leave negative private feedback that it's going to affect your score. That's that's my guess. But um, I should probably check with them on that. See, ineligible jobs. Why would some of these be ineligible? Oh, jobs with no feedback are excluded from the job success score. Or it's a job in progress like this one is. This one's also a job in progress. Now, okay. This one was not a job in progress. No feedback was given. Excluded from the job success score. Okay, so I mean, it seems like if there's no public feedback, that it's just excluded entirely, even if there's negative private feedback. I don't know. I don't know if there was any negative private feedback. I know this client was pretty satisfied with the work, so there probably wasn't. Um, but anyways... That's what it seems like there, that if there's no public feedback, it really is excluded. So, all right, moving on to the uh, client satisfaction. Um, okay, and we just, yeah, we already looked at this. Now, long-term relationships. Okay, so now it's categorizing. So what you can do yourself is as you go through these tabs, it'll now show you which jobs are considered long-term relationship that's affecting your score. Then you go to higher earnings, same thing. There can all of these are, I mean, almost all my jobs are higher earnings because I rarely, if ever, take on super small jobs. It's always a couple thousand, unless it's like a consulting gig. Like sometimes it's a 20 minute consulting call. So $33, you know, let's see what they say here about learn more. Jobs without client feedback are not eligible for job success score, except jobs that meet the requirements of long-term relationships. Okay, that's a new clarifier. Oh, okay. So what they're saying is, so if you have a long-term relationship with an ongoing client, let's say it's been over three months, unless you've had them leave feedback mid-contract, that client will have no feedback given because you're just in an ongoing long-term relationship. But at that point, it will actually positively impact your score, even though they've left no feedback yet. That's what they're saying. Okay. Um, so overall, that is the breakdown of your job success score. Honestly, I can't really find any clues. Maybe you can comment below if you have any idea of what could be causing my job success score to be at 99% and not 100%. Um, the only thing I can think of is that the no feedback given contracts, which I have many of those because of the 40 that I had to close, is somehow impacting this score. Because um, I did that earlier this year. And it was this year that my score dropped to 99%. Um, that is my only guess. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Hopefully the analysis of what contributes to your score was helpful to you, but I do want to summarize really a list of action steps of what you should be doing regularly in order to maintain a high job success score, especially if you're a beginner freelancer. How do you even get that thing going? Um, the best thing you can do at first is to have a combination of trying to find some short-term, low-paying projects, even though high-paying projects contribute to a higher score and long-term contracts contribute to a higher score, you also need a just higher quantity of jobs to start getting that public feedback to get that rating and review up and going. Um, so I would say that half of your jobs should be short, uh, low-paying jobs you can complete quickly and get a positive rating and review. 
to just start getting that feedback on your profile. And then the other half should be contracts that you're seeking that are longer term. You need to make sure that as you're considering what your offerings are, what your packages are, that you are thinking about what you can offer as a long term uh, service where they're paying you on a monthly basis to keep doing something over and over again, whether it's support on their website, writing their blog post, producing videos. Most freelance work can be done on a regular basis for a client and you can um, persuade them to hire you long term. Um, but that is something that you want to be setting your sights on pretty early that you are seeking out those longer term relationships. And as you focus on that in a mixture, because as you, so like the place that I'm in now, I am mostly looking for long term relationships. I don't have to try to get a bunch of quick, small projects just to boost up my profile because I have plenty of experience there. But when you're just getting started, you do have to have more of a mix. Um, and then, yeah, just know that you, as you take it seriously and get the education you need, um, you don't have to be a full-time freelancer to get a high job success score, to stop, start getting top rated plus. It can very much be just a few hours a week that you're putting in part-time while you have another job to start getting your profile and success score going. And also, if you have any confusion about your own job success score, please comment below, ask me some questions, and I'll be able to respond either in another video or directly to you. Um, and check out FreelanceFamilyMan.com. You can look at the different courses I have available. The Freelance Family Man Membership Program is where I can review your personal, your upper profile personally. And you can also receive coaching from me for throughout the month. So I encourage you to check out that program. While it's early, it's only $59 a month. The price will go up as the program keeps expanding, but you can lock in that lower price now if you join. All right. Um, I wish you luck on your journey with uh, finding more clients on Upwork and I'll talk to you next time.